Hello and welcome to Turning Point. Uh, on this edition, we shall look back at India's one-day performance in South Africa. Just to remind that India is placed on the fourth spot in the ICC ODI rankings right now. I'm joined by two gentlemen to talk about India's tour of South Africa, how their year has been in ODI cricket and Test cricket. Mehir Bose, journalist and author, and cricket administrator Amrit Mathur. Mehir, um, Indians superpowers of world cricket. No one features on that honors ICC honors list in the individual category. Of course, there is Rohit Sharma and there is uh, Rishabh Pant in other lists. But uh, when we talk about individuals, there's none of them. No, India's tour of South Africa has been disappointing. Uh, I think the problem with Indian cricket for some years now, perhaps about more than more than maybe nearly two decades, is that India is a supreme economic power, and it has not often translated that economic power into power on the cricket field. I think perhaps the mm-hmm. Indians expected South Africa to be easy. South Africa were missing some key players. They were not considered a great side. The prediction was India would win the Test series three nil. But what we saw is what we have seen for some time. I mean, Indian cricket has changed. Let's face it. India is now led by a pace attack. When I was growing up, all those years ago, we used to be told about Nithar and Amar Singh, which was before my time. And a, a man called Vizi, who managed to captain India, said, "If you give me ten tall Sikhs, I'll give you fast bowlers." And other people said, "India doesn't doesn't produce fast bowlers because it's the land of Gandhi and doesn't eat beef and things like that." But anyway, the point is, India has fast bowlers. <laughs> India has a pace attack. But the Indian batting. Which used to be, you know, I'm talking even before the Fab Four, the batting of uh, Gavaskar, Vishwanath, the Fab Four. The Indian batting has failed, and that that was shown in the entire series throughout the Test matches. Had the Indian batting ever made 300 runs in one of the innings, which they failed to do, I think they could have won um, um, the second or possibly the third Test. And I think that was the basic problem. And the South African batting on the fourth inning in both mm. Test matches that India lost did much better than what was expected. In the One Day matches again, the the I mean you know the the final match of course by then it was a dead rubber. Um, uh, that score was not a very big score in modern 50 over cricket, and and India couldn't overhaul it. Lost by four runs. So I think it's the batting that one must raise questions about it. And what has gone wrong with the batting? Kohli of course, uh, apart from one innings in the Test matches really didn't do very well at all. We'll talk about Virat Kohli and uh, the individuals that you just mentioned about. But Amrit, coming to you, except for the South Africa tour, India didn't do too badly in Test cricket. In fact, uh, they were the world number one Test side until, of course, uh, Australia has uh, now, um, you know, gotten ahead of them. They are the number one Test side. But what really happened? Why did none of the Indians? Uh, make it to those uh, big lists, uh, as one would say, in the ICC awards? Because there has been a major slump as far as Indian cricket is concerned in the last six months. In England, we looked to champion side. Mm-hmm. We did well. We narrowly lost to New Zealand in that uh, you know, test championship final. But look where we are now. Six months ago, we had two international teams, one in Sri Lanka, one in England. And we had enough bench strength. We had a good pace attack. Everything looked fine. Then everything came off, you know, the wheels came off, so to say. We did poorly in the T20 World Cup. And now this bad loss to South Africa, which is, I think, in terms of quality, not as good as us. But we lost comprehensively. We lost easily. Mm. We lost test matches. We lost one day. We lost test matches when they chased down runs in the fourth innings twice comfortably. And don't forget, they were without the main bowler, no care. And a batting which is pretty suspect without mm. Trump, without AB de Villiers. So we lost to a team we were expected to defeat easily. Same in the ODIs. We have batsmen pushing for places. We've got five pace bowlers. we got the spinners. And yet we lost 3-0. So I think there's something gone wrong seriously. We need to sort of reboot our... Uh, mm. We need to look at some senior players, whether it's in test matches or in ODIs. And there's a larger question. When England lost recently in England, in Australia, mm. excessive emphasis on white ball cricket was one of the reasons that people said for England's decline. Now, India's sort of growth or India's development in the last 10 years or so has been attributed to white ball cricket. Right. 
So while white ball cricket is a problem in England, it was supposed to be the answer and the reason for India's, you know, development. Hmm. But suddenly, you know, despite our emphasis on white ball cricket, having the IPL, having a very high profile Mushtaq Ali tournament, we didn't do well in the T20 format in uh, the recent World Cup. And now this loss in South Africa. So I think there's plenty to worry. There's reason to be concerned. And I think serious tactical changes have to be made in terms of how we play. And we also have to look for new players in both in test matches and in the one-day format. Mm-hmm. Mihir, uh, you know, just talking about the ODI series loss 3-0, this is only the third time in this millennial that India has been completely whitewashed and that perhaps hurts the Indian fans more, the series score line. Now, India went to South Africa, as you mentioned, as the favourites. Where exactly would you say they got derailed? Well, as we said, we, they, they, you know, they didn't come together as a team. They didn't bat very well. I think there has been a problem with the Indian opening, um, batting for some time now. There have been lots of changes and both in the tests and in the, um, one day limited overs format. And mm-hmm. that hasn't been solved. Amrit, of course, has been heavily involved in IPL, a great promoter of IPL. And I agree with him that compared to England, um, where I live where, you know, one day cricket is still shunned. Um, the English mm-hmm. still pine for five day cricket. Indians have shown that IPL can open up new pastures. I mean, the fast bowlers that have come up have come up from areas uh, that uh, when I was growing up in Mumbai, that great city with this greatest cricket team ever, um, you know, you wouldn't have imagined uh, they played cricket or knew what cricket was, you know, and all that, all that is progress. But I think there has also been, and one must raise questions about the the leadership in the team. I hesitate to uh, criticize Kohli because Kohli has been a successful captain. It's very interesting. Kohli's um, decision to leave Test cricket has received a great deal of publicity in England and praise in England. And obviously, his record speaks for itself. But I think there's a whole question of um, if Kohli is not there, who leads the team? You know, where does uh, Rahane fit in? And of course, Pujara. Pujara's form is home matches has been different to Pujara's form uh, in away matches. So these problems haven't been solved. And um, Amrit is at the heart of IPL, so so knows that well. Whether the IPL format, while it has helped the uh, advent of fast bowlers, Jasprit Bumrah is a classic example. When he first came, they said he could never play test cricket. And he's shown, you know, he's made mugs of those experts. Whereas in the batting format, maybe IPL is not that helpful. I don't know. I mean, you know, there have been batsmen who have emerged. But in that sort of classical Indian batting, the Gavaskars, the Vishwanaths and so on, or the Fab Four of, of Tendulkar, Dravid, Lakshman and Ganguly. I mean, we haven't seen anybody like that emerge. We have seen the odd batsman you know, um, making double centuries and then fading away, not persistent, not consistently playing in which, in the way that these other batsmen of that era played. In one respect, and um, it's very interesting, before IPL emerged a batsman um, who, who would have been made for IPL, Sevak, you know, and I don't know what has gone wrong with the batting, but I, I suspect looking at it, there has been a problem with Indian batting. Maybe the IPL has contributed to that. Well, uh, the modern day cricketers, uh, they like to be clones of A.B. de Villiers. They like to be clones of Matthew Aden. Um, Amrit, do you agree with the fact that uh, IPL has contributed towards our batting problems? Well, I agree with uh, Mehir to a point that uh, it's developed a new breed of cricketers who play a very different way. And that's not actually suited to the five day cricket match. So that is the challenge. Also, I think we give too much importance to stray IPL performances. And we think a player is much better than what he actually is because he's played two stunning innings in a 20-over game. And we think he's going to you know, carry that form and that success into test cricket. It doesn't happen like that. So I think too much emphasis and too much importance given to the IPL uh, performances. Also, I think in South Africa, we had major leadership issues. You know, we had mm. a new captain because of various reasons, you know, Virat resigning, uh, you know, Rohit being unfit. But the fact is that you have a captain 
without any experience of captaining any side except in the IPL for two seasons where also he didn't do very well so you got a man mm-hmm. top job without basic eligibility or you know job experience nothing mm-hmm. so i don't think that helps you know when you're leading a test side or you're captaining of a, a national team that uh, you have a captain who's just not up to it maybe he'll grow and become a better captain you know down the line but mm-hmm. in south africa i think captaincy was an issue leadership was an issue and the entire team looked as if you know short of energy no intent tired as if you know just not there so i think we need to look at various things we need to look at ipl we need to look at uh, the quality of batsmen we have we need to look at maybe you know other options in test cricket we need to again look at your ranji trophy and your domestic format you have to look at what is the long term yeah. strategy in terms of odis ranji trophy test matches i think there are serious question and maybe it's a good thing that you lost mm-hmm. and it sort of gets people to think reflect introspect and find the right answer so while this is a setback it's also an opportunity amrit mentioned the tour of england which preceded um south africa and it was very interesting yes england india have a lead they still have to play a test match i was at uh, southampton where india lost to new zealand it's very interesting and again this shows my age i'm even older than amrit uh, new zealand used to be india's rabbits you know when new zealand came to india india always won my great hero shivaj gupta the greatest leg spinner we shall ever see and you don't have to take my word it's gary service's word and gary i think knew a bit about cricket you know people talk of shane warn but gupta was greater than warn but anyway we used to beat new zealand and new zealand was the first place we won a test series abroad now we invariably lose to new zealand and there was a lack of fire in the way india played that test match and in england it's very interesting to see india win a test match and then immediately at headingley have a complete collapse but india came back and you know who knows had the test series finished um and because of covid it couldn't india might have wrapped it up but i think one of the factors here that is very important is is very interesting what happened in australia two two seasons ago which was of course sensational that there was no kohli and you know uh, rahane led the side and the contrast between kohli and rahane i found very very interesting rahane is this very quiet very understated man but i think i mean i can understand why rahane perhaps was not considered suitable to carry on but as amrit says you know bringing in somebody who had no captaincy uh, status i mean whether again ipl produces this that you know leaders i mean i i think amrit made a very good point about ipl suddenly producing cricketers i remember in the tour of 2018 hardik pandya coming along you know he was sensational in the t20 and then in the test matches he was absolutely brilliant in india winning at um, nottingham and of course right. now he's completely faded you know he's he's around in the periphery but he's he's no longer considered essential in the team so i suppose to a certain extent uh, maybe there are far too many cricketers coming up of the same pedigree but none of them are that good to last would that be the reason um well we'll talk about that we'll also tell you where hardik pandya is these days and what rahul ravid has said <laughs> about pandya but um since you spoke about the captaincy crisis uh, in indian cricket would you say this series was in a way also marred by the crisis that there was uh, and suddenly virat kohli deciding to leave test cricket before that um you know the one day captaincy was he was stripped of the one day captaincy would you say all of this also resulted in um india's disastrous performance in south africa mehir well i mean kohli's decision uh, presumably was dictated by what had happened in south africa you know taking i mean said kohli had set himself the task of crossing this final frontier india having mm. crossed the final frontier in australia first under his captaincy then under rahane's captaincy you know he really desperately wanted india to cross this final frontier and having failed to do that he clearly decided he did a b- bit of a dhoni like decision if you remember some years ago dhoni in australia yeah. suddenly announced that he was going to leave i mean you know this has become a new trend in india in the old days indian politicians used to suddenly leave but then they would be please you 
know, people would go down on their hand and feet saying, don't leave. And then they would come back to the captaincy. But now this modern India, I don't know. I don't recognize this modern India. The India I grew up, you know, no politician ever left the Gadi, you know, or no captain ever left the Gadi. And the Amrit Mathur would never have left his seat, you know. Uh, and, you know, even if the chair, even if the chair was taken away, he would find a, a, a tool to sit on. But now this new India has grown up. So maybe Kohli, you know, um, who knows that Kohli hasn't told us in detail why he wanted to go. But presumably Kohli feels that a uh, new leadership would come up. But I, one can't see a new leadership coming up. In the, I mean, I'm told the talk is that just with Bumrah might take over as captain. Um, who knows? I mean, to have a fast bowler as captain is rare. Maybe Bumrah will show or has already shown the capacity for leadership. We'll have to see. And that might be quite a shrewd move. The talk I've heard is that Jasprit Bumrah might take over as India's um, captain. We shall have to see. And of course, the Indians have to decide whether they want a captain for all three formats. Because England, for instance, have have different captains. And many people uh, will say, many cricketers have told me that Owen Morgan is a better captain than Joe Root. You know, there are different formats. And again, that is often a decision that the Indians have, um, you know, have uh, changed their minds over. For a time, Dhoni was, had given up the captaincy of Test Cricket, carried on in one-day format, whether the one-day format completely needs a, a different captain to the test matches is, is again a matter of debate and, and something that the Indians haven't quite resolved. Very interesting there. Jaspreet Bumrah, fast bowling uh, captain in all formats. We'll have to wait and see if that happens. Amrit, uh, I was asking you about uh, you know uh, what Mahir said, Dhoni leaving uh, test captaincy all on a sudden. Now, Virat Kohli has also done uh, a similar sort of a thing. But, you know, when we talk about Dhoni and what when we talk about Kohli, their love for Test cricket is quite different. Um, in having known that, would you say Kohli uh, gave it up all um, a little too soon? Well, not too soon because, listen, he spent seven years as captain. Seven years as captain across formats. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think um, I can understand... If he says that he's had enough, you know, he's uh, tired, he's uh, you know, run out of ideas, he needs a break, it's understandable. But I think there's a difference between the way Dhoni left and Kohli left. Dhoni left in the middle of a test series between two test mm-hmm. matches. Whereas, you know, Kohli's announced retirement at the end of a bad test series. And after having given up captaincy in other formats. But, uh, you know, coming back to this entire captaincy issue... Whenever there's a transition, especially after a strong leader, there will be some time for adjustment for the team to get used to new ideas, new strategy, new way of doing things. But uh, going forward, I think we are in a tricky situation. The obvious captain is Rohit Sharma. But Rohit Sharma happens to be older than Kohli, happens to be much more unfit in terms of you know physical injuries and missing out on games. So is he a long-term answer? He has the experience, he's been captain for a long period, but is he the answer to India's captaincy issue? Rahane was mentioned, and the difference between Rahane and others was that Rahane has been a captain and a leader right from junior cricket. He's led Bombay junior teams, he's led Bombay in Ranji Trophy, he's led uh, the West Zone in Dilip Trophy. He's been a captain and got experience of the job for a long period of time. KL Rao doesn't have that. And certainly Bumrah doesn't have it at all. You know, he might be a contender because he's a sort of a certainty in the Indian team, in whatever team you pick. But he has shown no signs of being a leader and he's not been tested. So would you mm. trust somebody like him, totally inexperienced, to lead a national side? You know, Rahul looked very good. You know, he's, uh, he's calm, he's uh, articulate, he seems to be smart in terms of his cricket but was found wanting in, what, four games? So, right. Boomer has pushed into a similar situation. He might be equally mm-hmm. disappointing. So, I think mm-hmm. it's important to find the right leader, the captain, identify him early, give him time to get used to the job, give him some, you know, experience as a vice captain or something, let him lead a Ranji Trophy team, let him lead an IPL team, and then make him captain of the national side. I think there is a gap in the way we have handled the entire captaincy issue. I think there's been no clear succession policy. Whereas some other mm. choose a leader in advance and then groom him. I think we missed that. So maybe we'll pay a price for that. Tell somebody who learns on the job. 
instead of being prepared for the job absolutely when dhoni was going kohli was almost prepared so we didn't yeah. have a big gap there now mihir i'm going to answer your question on hardik pandya where he is he's not gone missing the ipl uh, amdabad team has picked him as their captain the um, coach rahul dravid also spoke about him about when we asked him about the balance of the side he said the two people who've been missed uh, are hardik pandya and um, ravindra jadeja do you think that these are the two key players who if they come back to the side can uh, be answer to india's odi problems oh certainly i i have a great time for both hardik pandya and uh, ravindra jadeja uh, i remember um, listening i was there at a press conference that hardik pandya gave on the 2018 england tour um when uh, he he masterminded an indian win and you know this is a man who left school in the ninth standard and yet here he was speaking hindi and english fluently and in fact speaking hindi more to the english journalists which of course they understood perfectly well you know because they've all been brought up in hindi and so you know as was evident in the copy Uh, they wrote the next day um but anyway i won't go into that the point is this was a confident guy and, and uh, ravindra jadeja has always been a remarkable cricketer in fact i think there is a lot of leadership quality in him amrit mathur says about planning but i think um with great respect amrit my experience of india is that um, the great jawaharlal nehru i don't know if one can say the great jawaharlal nehru anymore the great jawaharlal nehru who i grew up under still the greatest prime minister i lived under despite having lived under mrs thatcher set up the five year plans which are still going but in India has produced good captains suddenly Ajit Wadekar who I uh, saw so much of when I was growing up in Mumbai saw his test debut saw him drop a catch and all that sort of thing and he turned out to be an exceptional captain very suddenly Dhoni himself if you think about it when Dhoni emerged Dhoni took an untried team to Johannesburg for the start of the for the first uh, T20 World Cup nobody wanted you know the none on the fab four wanted to go they didn't go and Dhoni turned out to be an exceptional captain because you know Tendulkar of course uh, supported him and think and Tendulkar arguably the greatest batsman in the history of cricket turned out to be not that good a captain so you know i think captaincy is not related to ability in that sense a cricket captain is and that sense is different to any other form of the game a cricket captain need not be the best player in the team i mean rahane wasn't the best player mm. in the team that won in australia yet rahane led that side as amrit says he had experience of captaincy whatever of course also had experience of captaincy um, at the ranji trophy level at the school and college level now whether there's such a player like that maybe jadeja might prove you know with that bat of his that he flourishes when he scores a 50 you know every time every time he asks a bowler to come on maybe he will flourish that bat and then you know the bowler will come on and take wicket who knows i mean you need somebody with that spirit mind you kohli has been exceptional kohli could tell the indian board my i'm expecting a child i'm not going to uh, you know uh, i'm not going to carry on with the tour of australia i'm going home despite the fact that india had been bowled out for 36 so i think we are not going to get another kohli and maybe we don't need another kohli we need a different kind of captain interesting thoughts there amrit since we are one series is over we are going into another series and uh, you know this is the year when india has to find a team uh, ultimately for the world cup which is next year um what are the fixes you would suggest right now well it's obvious you no know, you do need all rounders that's why you know dravid talking about hardik pandya and jadeja because both bring multiple skills to, to a team and uh, both have sort of proved themselves at the international level they're good enough to play and perform there so a fit jadeja and a fit pandya would be a great sort of asset for the indian team and that would actually enhance our uh, you know prospects in whether t20 cricket or in 50 over games so i think we would want them to be fit and uh, don't forget that both are not only all rounders who can bowl who can bat but are also good finishers so that's an added you know dimension to the play which they bring to the team so i think it's crucial for india to make sure that those two guys are fit and available and ready for the world cup otherwise i think you know i don't think there are many other gaps to be filled you just need consistency as you do in any format of the game i think we were enough batsmen at the top but maybe resetting and more clarity about the roles because very often we have seen that we made a good start we are 
you know, cruising up mm-hmm. 25 overs and suddenly instead of the run rate increasing, it slows down. So that's where the all-rounder finisher comes in, you know, as in a 2020 game to, you know, accelerate towards the end. So just some change of strategy and two, three major players were unfit. Rohit Sharma getting back, Pandya and Jareja, it'll be a different Indian team. Meher, let me ask you one last question about Kale Rahul's batting position. When Rohit Sharma comes back, if Shikhar Dhawan continues to show the form he is in, should Kale Rahul bat at number three or go further lower down the order? I personally would have uh, Sharma and Rahul opening because uh, the way they batted in England in very, very testing conditions was very, very impressive, you know. And you need, if, you're, if your side is going to score runs, you need them to start well. I mean, we've seen with the England performances, uh, they never start well. They, they haven't got an opening pair. The result is their number three, Joe Root, comes in, very fine batsman. And if he doesn't score runs, then England collapse, as we've seen during the Ashes series. So I personally would have Sharma and Rahul opening. And remember, Sharma has taken a long time um, to be accepted in the test format because, you know, he mm. was there, you know, he was an absolute obvious choice in the one day format. I think the problem with Indian batting is I think the Indian batsman has read too many histories of medieval Indian histories. You know, the, the great kings going out to battle, Prithvira Chauhan, you know, winning the battle. He thought he had won it and then suddenly <laughs> he finds he's overwhelmed by Muhammad Ghori and, you know, the whole, whole battle is lost. I think they should stop reading medieval Indian history. It used to make me cry when I was young, but that's a long time ago. I think they should read some modern Indian history, which you know, and also I think the other thing is to be said to the Indian cricket followers that they need to be a bit more patient. I grew up when a draw was a great victory for India. Then the Nawab of Puthodi changed things. Amrit will, will also remember that time. And Amrit was a very fine manager of the first Indian team to go to South Africa. He was actually a very good runner. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't take part in the Olympics. Nobody watched him running around the, the parks of South Africa with Ali Bakar. But at that stage, India just drawing was important, you know, though India lost one test match, but they are actually going out for a win. Now the Indian team can go (laughs) abroad and win and expect to win. And that is a difference. You know, that mindset is different, but we need to develop on that mindset, but not expect too much of a change. Because if you've had, you know, you've been playing cricket since 1932, and if a draw was good enough, you know, suddenly to go abroad and win, which Kohli has done, and one must give him enormous credit for that. He didn't manage it in South Africa, win a series, that is. He did win a test match, which again, in South Africa, we, we, we hadn't won too many test matches in South Africa. I think one must give credit to that, but we must build on that and not have our expectations expectations too high because if you have that then you are likely to be disappointed and feel disillusioned and that can have an impact on the way the game goes right interesting thoughts there gentlemen amrit mathur and meher bose well indian team is on a transition and we will hope that they are able to start winning in the new year when they face west indies next month thank you very much for joining me on the turning point podcast 